the big finding that I did with the Boy Crisis book was finding that the ISIS recruits were more than 90% dad-deprived boys. The prisoners were more than 90% of the 90 of the of the 93% that are males. Uh, the prisoners are more than 90% dad-deprived boys, and the mass shooters were not just boys, mostly white boys, but also almost all of them dad-deprived. And so I started to see that. Um, the women who were single moms were dealing with this enormous experience of being overwhelmed. Yeah. Dads were feeling they had no purpose, they were being left out of the process, and the kids needed their dads. Yeah. And so it was like a three-way lose situation. I have a, a, be making a proposal here in the coming days around making sure there's a mental health counselor in mm -hmm. every school mm -hmm. in the United States, having access to play therapy, having yes. access to these kind of things that will help the kids heal. It's yes. all about healing. Yes. And then it's also about them connecting with mm -hmm. their teacher, connecting mm -hmm. with their fellow students, mm -hmm. connecting with the principal in mm -hmm. the broader community, and then bringing the parents in. I mean, I, my wife was a single mom. You mm -hmm. know, she comes, she was divorced and had two kids. My mm -hmm. mom was divorced and had a couple kids. Mm -hmm. This is something that, that I'm familiar with, yes, and, yes. I, and I recognize it. And I remember looking back, it was the coaches that I had playing sports that were mm -hmm. a big influence on my life. Mm -hmm. But it mm -hmm. can't just be sports, mm -hmm. although that's a part of it. Mm -hmm. It's got to be the Boy Scouts. Yes. It's got to be church organizations. It's got to be, you know, summer leagues yes. and intramural leagues where yes. you do have coaches, but you're not necessarily on the varsity team, but mm -hmm. just access.